All right, everybody, welcome to the Browns. Let's do this, man. That top order just demolished him. <laughs> so, normally, what that structure looks like is like this. And honestly, that's part of why the Browns are here as well, so that you don't have to wait for Kobe in order to see who's who and what's what. All right, everybody, welcome to The Groundsman, where you find everything that has to do with school cricket, um, roundup of the games, what the boys are doing, how they're doing it, why they're going about the way they're going it, along with everything that has to do with the program and the system and sort of everything that, that they go through. So again, welcome to The Groundsman. This is the podcast. As usual, I've got my co-host, TT. How are you doing, Doc? I'm doing good, man. It's good to be back. Yeah, man. Third week on the trot. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I think yep. there, there's a there's a lot that um that that's been going on. Um, interesting part though, uh, the kids. I mean, a lot of the seniors now are sort of going through prelims, um, and I think that's partly why we've seen sort of the likes of Gwenama Park and the and Josh Elliott and some of the other youngsters get an opportunity in their first teams and. And really, they haven't disappointed, man. So, um, yeah, I think there's there's a combination now, of sort of a a, a, a resumption of the school year, um, prelims for the matrix, um, and also opportunities to keep one eye on 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 the Coke Week and and one eye on the books. So there's actually quite a bit going on, man. So does that mean some of the guys that are playing now aren't actually part of the first team? Yeah. I don't see how you can, I don't see how, how a player like um, Quena goes back to the under 15. You can't take him back. Can you? <laughs> uh, you can't, you can't, man. Um, and, and I'll tell you what I've seen, right? So, um, I've, uh, because he's on our radar, five could hauler playing for the first team. What then we're doing is that we're sort of keeping an eye on him, right? So the under-15s have been playing, and he's been a part of that uh, since Stidian's under-15 side. Um, but I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm trying to reach out to, to the coach himself to let us know um, how they're using him. But I feel like it's almost like they are using him as a, you know, you know a break in case of emergency kind of situation. Um, they, I mean, the one game they, they played, I think two games last week, uh, the first game he came on second change. Um, the, the second game he came on, I think third or fourth change. Right. And every time he comes on, she sort of just decimates whatever's left. Um, so it almost feels like these coaches are using him. Uh, to, they're giving other under 15s an opportunity, but the, he needs some game time, so they're letting him play there. And I don't know how I feel about that, dude. Is that like when SA was trying to still insist that Mone Moko and Dale stay in our opening bowlers, even though they had Rabada? <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. When when we all knew that Rabada should be pairing up with Dale, um, and, yeah. and Mornay should be a first changer. We all knew that. But I, 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 I'm, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm in two minds about it, right? Because on, on one end, you're like, you've got a strike bowler um, and you, he's absolutely decimating top orders um, at a senior level. He's playing for your side. And obviously you, you asked him, you said, hey, you're under 15, you're available, you got to play. Fine. He pitches up the games. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if that's the kind of thing that, that um, gives a player a complex. You know, like you, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine now. I'm, I play for the seniors, but I'm here to play for the under 15. When you don't let him loose at the top of the order, are you, are you not creating a complex in a young player where you almost uh, creating, creating an environment where the other kids feel like the superstar is here? Um, let's hope, let's all get an opportunity before he, he comes on to ball. No, 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 Chief. 
this is how it works. The best players get the first opportunities. Everybody else comes second. That's just sports. We're, we're not going to bring on Cristiano Ronaldo in the 80th minute just because the other, te- the other players want their fair sh- shot on the pitch. Yeah. It's not how it works. And we almost ruined Rabada by forcing. Fortunately, Moko couldn't hang. And so he started to naturally fall off. But we almost lost Rabada. We, all, we literally almost lost the best bowler in the world today right now because we didn't want to treat him like the exceptional talent that he is. Yeah. Stars get treated like stars because they are stars. They are better than everybody else. Yeah. And listen, I'm not saying give him um, special treatment. I'm saying give the man what he deserves. Yeah. Don't, don't take it away from him just because he's young. If he's the best bowler, he should be opening. Period. Yeah. doesn't matter how old. I don't care if he was 11 years old. He was 11 years old, caning under 18. Let that, then that's how we discover the young phenomenon. And that is what you don't find a Tunduka unless you allow a 16-year-old to open the batting. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you yeah. we can't find them at that age unless you give them the stage and you say he's got to perform at that level. That's how we see if you are a pro- child prodigy. And SA doesn't have a lot of child prodigies because we always think everybody's too young to do what they need to do what their God-given talent is. And yeah. some of these guys, it's just what they're born to do. Yeah. You can see it. You put a ball in KG's hand, that boy was built to bowl. Yeah. He was built to bowl. But anyway, I get carried away because for me, <laughs> that's where you really lose the greatness. Greatness is great from the day it was born. And yeah. so the moment you see it at a young age, you got to maximize it. Yeah. You're not going to see greatness at the age of 28. Yeah. Absolutely. You're going to see it at 14, 15, 16. But anyway, let's get into the Groundsman podcast. Yeah. This no, is starting no, no. to I, sound I, like a I chat agree with the kid you. on the boundary. <laughs> I agree. With, listen, man, just to add on to what you're saying, right? Like, it's, 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 it's maybe part of the reason why we lose. Um, we've, we've also probably lost some of the grades to other sporting codes, right? Um, to you, if, if you don't give a player like Guanama Parker the, the new ball, what are you doing? You know, like, and, and I understand that sports and we're in this era of everybody gets a gold medal, everybody gets an opportunity. But I mean, if, if at, at 15, at like 15, 16, these boys are testosterone's kicked in, bone structures kicked in, some kids have come back and they've gone through their growth spurt. And they're really trying to maximize this time where they are nearing peak strength, right? Yeah. So to, be, to, to not allow him to put numbers on the board, because essentially that's what you're doing, right? As a coach, if you're saying, okay, we've got this thoroughbred, um, he's fantastic, he's really good, he's technically too good for this age group right now, we'll bring him on if we're struggling, what you're doing is that you're, you're denying him the opportunity for a five-wicket haul. So what does he do? He comes on in the last three overs or the last four overs of a 2020. He picks up two wickets. He goes for eight runs or something because they nick him off or something like that. Like it's, 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 it's a little deflating for a player like that because essentially the first team they're waiting for the seniors to, to sort of finish up with prelims before he can go and, and, and play properly again. Um, but, but at this point in time, you're not allowing him to put numbers on the board that will benefit him going forward in terms of his resume to get other opportunities. Yeah. So anyway, man, um, but that's, that's just, just something a, that I saw. Something that you just mentioned, man. You know, one of the key things that, I think SA we miss the trick because we don't we don't allow for mistakes earlier on so that you can be great later on. We'll lot of let you make mistakes later on and be more critical of you in your junior phase. Yeah. And I think that's where we've missed the trick. A kid like Winner should be spending his entire high school playing first team cricket. 
his Absolutely. entire high school. I mean, he's what under 15, so he's probably what grade nine, grade yeah. nine, 10, 11, 12. He should be spending playing first team cricket. By the time he's actually in matric, he'll be the best 18 year old in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. That absolutely. He should be there. He should be playing for a, a top club in his in Joburg that gives him an opportunity to get around senior players, learn from experience, and really give South Africa then an opportunity to grab a, a young, fast bowler early. He shouldn't, and that's the thing, right? And and like you're saying, typical South African culture, we we're saying, okay, hold on, let him go through SA schools. Hold on, let's let him, let's put him through the academies. Hold on, let's put him through the the franchise system. Hold on, then we'll see how he does, and then only we'll bring him up and and see um, uh, what do you call it, and see whether or not he can fit in the in the structure at the time. Also, depending on um, if whoever <laughs> whoever's favorite isn't doing well at the time then he'll get an opportunity to go. But again, man, it's, it's just one of those things where it frustrates you because you're thinking, why is this kid, like you say, not playing at a top level? If, he's, if, if, if the seniors aren't playing, he should be at a club somewhere playing in their Premier League side um, and gaining experience there. Cool. Um, yeah, that's just us on, on, on just somehow the development that we see in a lot of players. It's, it's partly why, I mean, in the last episode that we spoke about, right, I was speaking about the talent drain that's moving out to other countries at as early yeah. an age as, as like 16, 17 years old. So it's, it becomes difficult when to argue with parents because it's also important to remember that it's, it's a lot of parents that go, hey, listen, I've got the means. Um, where, does, where can my... My, my son have the best opportunity to play at the highest level. Um, and if the development structures look like this, and essentially the gatekeepers um, are of a mindset um, that you have to go through the system in order to get to the top, it's, it's, it's a no wonder we haven't won a World Cup, man. And, and I think just for clarity, uh, for the people listening to this, we're always open to hear from the other side. So, I mean, if St. Saint Stithians wants to reach out to us, let us know what the plan is, right? Because right now we're, we're going off what we've seen in cricket, right? Yeah. And we're going off the information we have currently, right? Which is, he's an under-15 boy. Um, there's a couple guys right now not available in the first team. He might go down. And what we're essentially speaking against is we're saying to St. Stithians, no. When I need to play first team cricket. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And if you don't agree, let us know why. You know, we may, we may be seeing it wrong. You guys may have a great developmental plan for him and we're not opposed to hearing it out. And, you know, if it's, if it's a better plan, we're always happy to admit when we're wrong. Yeah, always. But you gotta bring, but you gotta bring your case forward, and we gotta know because this this means a lot to cricket fans. This means a lot yeah. because we want that World Cup, man. We yeah. want that World Cup, and we're gonna start from the ground up as fans, and we're now going to start having an active say. And you know, we're done with seeing guys pop up on the national side. Mm. And you got to go research him first to see what he's done. No, <laughs> you should yeah. be, you should be called up by popular demand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's how, how call we get, should be working primarily. Yeah. Yep. That's how we get stuck with a, with a, with a class in, right? I mean, I, I won't, <laughs> I won't lie. When, when, when hundred class came onto the board, I watched a lot of cricket. Um, and, and I've watched, uh, I do sort of try and keep up with the county, with the county system and sort of some of the, the big tournaments in Australia. Um, even the Caribbean sort of space now as well is starting to come up. IPL is out there. So you try and keep mm. up. When, when, when I heard the name Heinrich Klaassen um, is up now and he's, he's debuting for the Proteus, I thought, who? Okay, who is this guy? And where does he come from? 
right? Because the, the next thing you knew, he's Titan set up. I mean, he played Titans a few games. All of a sudden, there's a call up. Um, he's in the he's in the space now. He's now the backup keeper for Quinny. Um, he's in the top order. He's I mean, like it it astound. That is exactly. Let's not get too much into the protest, but <laughs> but that is exactly how you end up with players like those, right? Where everybody goes, who is this guy? Where does he come from? Um, and then the only guys that can really answer you are the fringe guys who are sort of in the developmental systems and go, yeah, no, he's in, in the academy. Yeah, he can play. Yeah, yeah he, he can play. Down. Yeah, can, I yeah. remember he scored 100 against whoever, and he did and this and right, he did man. that. But, I mean, in, in reality, <laughs> we, we're all we, – and, and, I mean, and that's why sort of his performances aren't surprising, right? I mean, he, in the yeah. T20s, he's batting – He's in the top order for South Africa. And he's played about, I think, 35 T20s, if I'm not mistaken, averaging 22. Okay? Um, when he joined South Africa, when he came up to South Africa, he was averaging like 25 or something like that in, in first-class cricket, um, T20s in specifically. Um, and, and I thought to myself, when, wow. when did we get to a point where you <laughs> – you averaged 25 <laughs> as a keeper batsman, and that was okay to make the Proteus. A top order, Noha. Mate, I wish you would go for try get into the Indian side with those guys. <laughs> I wish you would try. I wish you would try make Australia without, a, without people knowing who you are. I mean... I wish you would, just out of nowhere, just a kid that comes out of nowhere. I wish you would. It's, no, it's ridiculous. The only, time they, the only time national sides bring out a kid that's unknown is if he is completely bankable. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking undeniable. about a, what's that Australian kid that they took straight from? Like a David Warner. Yeah. Right? Guy playing club cricket, doing his thing, doing his thing. One day gets the call up and he just is undeniable. Yeah. Because that's that's the type of scrutiny those guys go under, is that you got to prove that this guy belongs in the side. We've yeah. literally got ne- an entire nation of kids trying to make the side. Tell yeah. us why this kid belongs here. Because yes. there's only a finite amount of spots, and there are thousands of us trying to play cricket. So you better be able to justify why we don't know him, yeah. and he gets a spot in that 15-man squad. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, right? Because South Africa operates on an equality of um, outcome and not an equality of opportunity, it almost felt like, and you could hear it on the corridor, right? Even some youngsters um, said it themselves, and they were like, it was almost as if they're like, okay, we've got enough color players and we need a backup keeper, right? <laughs> we can't get uh, uh, Mosele because it's just going to be one color player too many. Uh, we can't we can't get whoever it's going to be one. Let's go find the nearest, the closest um, uh, keeper that we can get um, to to come in and be a backup because we've got enough color players. And it's 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 and it's weird because we've got really good keepers across the board. No, like no matter the the color, there are guys that have been in the system that are really good keepers. And I'm not too bad with the bat. Um, so let's, to go, let's be honest. Let's be honest. I think I think we're, we're about to poke poke the bear a little bit. Anybody yeah. that's played cricket at a high level knows that there is favoritism. Yeah, and we all know that. Yeah, we all know that. Hendrik is probably cool with a lot of the selectors, or they like him for whatever reason. But it's not stats. We know that. Yeah. If it was about stats, Stephen Cook would have been playing since he was in his twenties. <laughs> oh it's man! Beyond... The, oh, the Stephen Cook. Oh, Stephen Cook. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because you, it's it, it comes down to that, and that's what we're gonna break here. You can say whatever you want, but when we start talking stats, then you're gonna have to tell us why this kid is still playing here when there are guys with better stats. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Stephen Cooks of the world never had a show where guys are advocating for their stats. 
Because I promise you, we would have gotten that guy into the national side, man. Yeah, He's absolutely. literally got arguably the best stats in domestic cricket. Yeah, he was an absolute beast, man. Like, for, and for years, for years, just knocking on the door. And he's the kind of guy, I actually like to, to speak to him a little bit because he's the kind of guy that if he had left, right, went to the UK or went somewhere else to try and play oh, for their national another KP. side. Another KP. He would have gotten in. Trot. Another yeah. Trot. Another KP. Uh, Eng- England is just enjoying how rotten our system is. <laughs> and I see Australia's also yeah. starting to dip in. New Zealand's starting New Zealand. to dip in. Yeah. They're all just enjoying the talent pool that's coming out of South Africa. Can you imagine an entire country in a 15-man squad would still take two to three players from our country yeah. and then go to a World Cup and beat us? Yeah, with those with those players that come from our country being sort of the catalyst of that defeat, it is. I don't know, man. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm still trying to. As, the more I dig into sort of school cricket and the development system, the more I I'm struggling to make a case for parents to keep their kids in the country, um, and have them get the opportunity to play for their country. Um, it, yep. it, it's getting, it's, it's becoming such a, a, a battle and a back and forth. I've got a chat with a mate of mine coming up this week who's very close to the uh, sort of the development system, right? So just to give you a, a sneak peek into next week's show. So we know from our playing days that if you played um, under 13 provincial cricket, um, that squad that played under 13 sort of forms the core all the way up to Kokwe, right? Um, yeah. You may have maybe two or three players that are interchangeable um, because of the talent pool at that time, but more or less, you'll, more, you'll probably find the, the top sort of eight or nine players, even let's say seven or eight players that remain the same and they play together um, right through to Kokwe. We know this, right? Yeah. Um, and if you're not fortunate enough to get in at that early age, and none of the sort of the core seven or eight guys get hurt or uh, transferred to another province and or anything like that. You, there's a very slim chance that you'll ever get an opportunity to play. We think for we think of a Bradley Fonica, right? Biggest guy in the in the province, quickest yeah. guy in no, the province. Literally, literally. Yeah, Brad had <laughs> one of those growth things. You know how we always see these big guys and we're like, he just keeps growing? He's yeah. one of those guys. So when we yeah. say literally big, he was literally the biggest high schooler in the province. Yeah. Ar- arguably, maybe in the country. The only yeah. guys that would arguably. rival him were guys that had the same, uh, probably the same condition as him. Yeah, yeah. Literally, he had world spurts in real time. It was, it was insane, right? Um, so you get guys like Brad who are, who are genuinely quick. Um, by the time yep. he was probably maybe 14, 15, he had gotten control of his, um, he had gotten control, <clears throat> which, which was very difficult at that age, at the pace that he was bowling. Um, and, mm-hmm. and it, honestly, if, if we didn't have um, the standard guys that were, that, that got into the system at, 50, at, at 13 years old, um, sort of set up to open the bowling for us, it, Brad could have easily made that Northwest side. And I played that Northwest side for about five years since I was 13. I was fortunate enough to get in around that time. Um, And I watched everybody play along uh, over through those years. And honestly, Bradley Fonica could have gone into that side easily if it wasn't for the fact that they've sort of solidified that side. We've got our opening bowlers. We've got the batsmen. Um, we'll fill in here and there. If we find something exceptional, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can phase them in or out. And again, um, sort of some of the biases of, of, of the provincial system, it also depends which coach is sort of said to be the, the head coach of the, <laughs> of, of the Coke Week that year, right? So yep. what we found, and, and this is what we know, is that if your coach... Um, is is sort of said to be the head coach of 
of the under 15s or the under 13s or under 17s that year for your provincial for your provincial side, what you often find is that um, kids from his school get preference, right? Um, one, because yeah. he knows them. He's like, no, I know him. He, he'll perform. He'll do well for me. He'll do this and that. Um, and everybody else gets on the back foot. So every coach comes in looking to give their kid an opportunity or the best um, uh, opportunity or layup to get into the side. And often they, those kids then get picked above, above really talented players on, on a pure numbers basis. Mm. And this, that's such a, you've opened up a wormhole, which we'll have to address in a different show, but it's that wormhole of um, should high school coaches be the provincial coaches or should that job, be allocated to somebody who's not attached to a school. Yeah, who sits in a provincial structure, doesn't coach any any high school. Yeah. Yeah. And we say that's the that's the Northwest coach this year. You guys come in and he's like, okay, uh, who's from where? Okay, cool. I like him. I like him. And it's and it should be separated from the coaches. The coaches can plead their cases, but I think that the selectors shouldn't be attached to the schools, man. Because you see it everywhere, man. Whoever is the coach and wherever he's coming from, there's always at least two. Or th- there's always at least three players from his school, at least. Yeah. And I saw it even from my own school. I mean, at at, uh, at, at the school I went to, um, the under fifteen year, uh, the guy that was coaching um, under fifteens was our coach from yeah. our school, and all of a sudden in my age group. There's, I think there was three of us. Three of us came from my school, and then an additional two came from Rustenburg, from our town itself. There's yeah. like five players from Rustenburg that year, right? Yeah. Mind you, the previous years too, that the coaches were from Clogsdorpe, you'll probably find six or seven guys coming from Clogsdorpe alone. And then it was the same with Potch, and we're same with everywhere. So I think it's, it's a natural thing for the coaches. So you can't really blame the coaches. Yeah. Because that's, they, that's them on the line. And if I'm going to go to battle, I'm going to go with the guys I know. Yeah. I'm going to try to get as many other guys I know because at least I, I've seen them perform when the mm. chips are down. I can, I can maybe see you at trials, but I don't know who you are when the chips are down. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's one of those things, right? Why General picks his own, <laughs> picks his, picks his own lieutenants. Um, no matter how good the guys he found they are, it's who can I go to war with? Who can I go to battle with and know that when, the, like you say, when the chips are down, um, we can go out there and, and, and grind out a win. Yeah. At the end of the day, you want people that you've seen perform before because it's also pressure on the coaches. You know what I mean? I mean, these coaches, there's pressure on them to go out there and perform to go out there and take a team that can win and that can do well. So their reputation's on the line. And so as a human being, you want to go with the people you know best. So it may not even, it's not even their fault. I think that the system itself may need to change to say we need an independent coach that can come in and base his decision based on player statistics because he doesn't know what they're capable of. He's looking at stats and he's looking at I still like the format that you explained last week. You guys can go check out that podcast where you explain how the trials work. I think that's still cool. I think guys play against each other. Let's play against each other. Let's see. But let's also use stats and let's remove the coaches. And I think then we have an equal um, opportunity. 100%, man. 100%. So the, I think there's a lot that can be said there. We'll dedicate... Um... Uh, a show to to just talking about the that that kind of analysis of where do coaches where coaches come from and their involvement in the selection process along with sort of um, coaching the the provincial side as a, as a whole and whether or not they should be there mm-hmm. and it, whether it disadvantages players or not I think that's something we can definitely do I'll add that to the show. Um, we had a, uh, a comment on, on, our, on one of our, our, our shows and one of our guys requested that we, 
uh, one of our guys requested if we can touch on um, the academies, right? And, and where the academies fit in, um, how does that whole system work um, and whether or not the academies are effective. Um, I think we, we're definitely going to touch on that. Uh, not today, though. Um, not today, yeah. though. Um, I'm, I'm still doing a bit of research. There are one or two things that I need to clarify before we can touch on that because the academy system is, is something interesting because there, there's, there's a, there are two conversations when it comes to the academy. There are private academies where guys make their money off of privately coaching kids. Right, upskilling them, yeah. getting them in the in in sort of the right frame of mind, getting them prepped for the season. Um, part of what they then do is have connections with recruiters um, and talent agents, and sort of put them forward, push them out to to try play um, outside of the country if they have the means. Um, and then we have an academy system that's attached to the provinces and the franchises. Um, which is sort of part of the cricket, cricket South Africa structures, um, which is then used to mold and develop young players to eventually play in, in, in our highest rank and give us an opportunity to get the best players. So um, the, yeah. there are two spaces there when it comes to the academies, and that's definitely something we're going we're gonna to cover in the next show or two. And I think if we can maybe add on that agenda... Um... Just if we could look at the differences between club cricket and academy, because I think a lot of parents don't really know the difference between when the kid says they're playing club cricket and they say they're playing academy. Mm, mm. Okay, yeah, happy to do that, man. Um, as as you know, I'm very passionate about club cricket, um, so I'm happy to to have that conversation, and and it, it does play a massive role. Um, club cricket and and both club cricket and academy. So we'll definitely do that, have that conversation. I'm definitely there for it. Um, once I've had the conversations and I've sort of put everything together, we'll 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 set it up in a show. Cool. Um, and yeah, shout out to Tawo Mojaki. He's the one. He's he's one of the uh, our fans that 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 subscribers that joined us on our on our youtube channel shout out to tawa mojaki appreciate the love man um hopefully appreciate we'll keep you, giving you content yeah definitely appreciate the love and support you know let's uh let's build a community around this thing. yeah definitely definitely cool uh two games we're reviewing this week um, we, again, uh, because the, the seniors are sitting in, in prelims, some schools are just letting the kids do what, what it is they need to do. Um, others are, are trying to create a, a good balance for, for the seniors to, to play and allow some juniors to come up. So we're reviewing two games this week. And I think these are going to be very interesting, particularly for you, T., uh, we had Vatukluf seniors versus mm-hmm. Victoria Boys High. Oh, the people's <laughs> team. Let's go. <laughs> the people's team. Um, and then we had Durban High versus Northwood. Durban, uh, for those of you guys who don't know Durban High, they are 35th on our top 40 rankings. Um, we are only covering the top 20 right now. But again, we said we've got other schools that sit outside of that. Uh, Durban High School are 35th and Northwood are 38th. So definitely still in the top 40 um, with thousands of schools that, are, that exist around the country to still be in the top 40 is, is, is worth having a look. And where's uh, Boys High and Vatukluf just for the people? Uh, for the people, so Boys High sitting in 20th. Okay. <laughs> Boys are sitting in 20th and Vatukluf is sitting at 17th. So, but, yeah. but, but, according to, but according to this week's game, the, I, that, that's, that's, that, that, that's a, that, those, those, three get, those three spots is a big one, man. Is a yeah, they big mean one, something. Man. They mean a lot, boy. Vatukluf came out swinging. But anyway. But we'll this talk doesn't, about this that. doesn't sound good. <laughs> the, people's team, people's team. 
Um, I don't know if they've been at home eating nachos, uh, playing Xbox, <laughs> not Come out on, running. Bro. I don't know what they've been doing, bro. But listen, yeah. Square is closed, boys. I don't know what's going on. Where is everyone? <laughs> listen, okay. Um, let's first run down the Durban High versus Northwood game. Uh, we had Durban High batting first, scoring 142. Um, in 35.5 overs, bowled out for 142. Um, and we had Northwood chasing it down in 33.2 overs um, with, with three wickets to spare. So um, I think there's, there's... Three wickets to spare? Yes, yes. So, so it, was a, it was tight. They were in the tail. Cutting into the tail. They, <laughs> they were in the tail. Um, I think... Yeah, I think uh, Northwood got away uh, got away with one there because Durban High almost came back to snatch that 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 victory. As you can imagine, not much to speak about in the batting order. Um, no fifties. Uh, highest score in that order was a twenty-two by the number eleven batsman. So there's really nothing to to write home about for Durban High School. Absolutely atrocious. Um, Average game. Average game from a performance perspective, mind you, they scored. Yeah, they. Yeah, no. Listen, there was nothing, nothing to write home about there. Um, obviously, then what was there to talk about was Northwood's bowling performance. Absolutely fantastic uh, performance there from David from Devin Rogers, who got a fiver on the weekend. Now listen to these stats, right? The boy, hey, the Devin. boy, the boy is here to play. The boy is here to play. Um, he bowled nine overs, went for 11 runs, and took a fiver. Huh. Yeah. He tore through, what was that? Did he tear through the top order? Uh, yeah, no, he tore through that top order. Tore through that top order, man. That, it, it, was, okay. it, was, it, was, it was rough. I didn't watch the game, but clearly from the stats, the boy came through and, and, and did the job. So, Devin Rogers, shout out. You're on our list. As a fiver, you joined Gwenama Parga on the groundsman's uh, top bowlers list. Um, we're definitely going to stop putting up the list as the season goes up. Got a fantastic, um, fantastic performance there from Devin Rogers, uh, Northwood. We see you, man. We'll be looking at you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so so that's that's Northwood um, versus Durban High School. Um, again, not much to write about for for the Northwood batting lineup. There really wasn't much to chase. Um, in reality, it got a bit dodgy. The middle order for Northwood seems a bit dicey, man. Um, the the top two batsmen, the opener scored a sixty six, um, and the 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 his partner scored twenty. So between the two of them. There was about 86 runs there. And then it just a collapse. Um, and in reality, they got saved by number eight and number nine who came in and just sort of uh, got the rest of the runs. Um, but you can see it's, it's still, um, it's, it's cool cricket kind of stuff where the middle order um, doesn't really seem quite sure about their role, how they should be going about it. Mm. Um, somebody needs to take responsibility in that middle order um, to get the job done. You cannot leave um, the number eight and nine to come and close out a game and you're chasing 142. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's poor. I don't even know if I want to call it COVID because other teams are putting up runs. They're putting out bags um, so whether, whether or not you want to call it COVID or not, I think the boys need to do better. Your seniors, you need to come out and perform like seniors. Look at the end of the day, man, when your middle order collapses, it like, it, it makes it so much harder when a game you should have just walked, should have, should have maybe gotten how much they, uh, did they bowl the other team out for? 140? 142. 142. Maybe they should have um, ended the game on 143 for, for, for three, for four. 
Maybe yeah. for five. Maybe, yeah, maybe for five. Maybe for five. But maybe for five, depending at, on the pitch. At, at this level, man, you can't you can't collapse as a as a middle order. Mm-hmm. And I think that middle order batsmen in high school cricket don't take it serious. I, I, I think that the best batsmen, the guys that usually go and play um provincial, are usually the guys that are number one, two, three in schools. Yeah. And then you find that maybe even number four. And then you find that usually between number four, five, six, and seven, it's guys that play, but, you know, they're good, but they're not the provincial guys in the team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, those they guys. They enjoy playing the sport. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this is a message to the provincial guy, is that the guy that made 60, you should have been there at the end. Yeah. It wouldn't have been this way if you were there at the end. Yeah. Because that's what separates. That's how we know, okay, he's a different caliber player, regardless of what that middle order looks like. Yeah. And this is no knock in the middle order. They could have just had a South Africa kind of day. It happens all the time in, <laughs> in SA. Um, but the mere fact that you got to 60, buddy, chasing 142, yeah. you could have just stayed in. Forget that 100. Just back through. All you had to do is walk back through. Even if you had gotten 98 not out, if you had batted through, it wouldn't have been a scare for the team. Yeah. Even if they had lost wickets on the other end, you could have just stayed there. But, you know, we don't know how you got out. Could have been a Jaffa. But yeah, uh, listen, um, we're talking Coke Week. We're talking guys that are going to go on to play provincial. So we need to know if you're in that conversation or not. Yeah. We're just trying to differentiate who's in the conversation to make it the Coke Week. Who's not? And if you're not that guy, then cool. 60 is enough for you. Yeah. You did a banging job. But if you're trying to be the opening batsman at Coke Week for your provincial side, you should have seen the team through to the end. That's standard. Yeah, definitely. Evan, for sure, we need you to pull through, son. <clears throat> we need you to bat through. You cannot, you cannot give up a ton. When you got in and you're at 66, you cannot let your middle order or your lower order come in and have to have to finish off. Um, uh, and you had gotten in. It's it's really that simple. Um, we need to demand more and require more. So, fella, you have an opportunity. There's an entire season in front of you next year, next time. Capitalize, capitalize. Yep. We'll be keeping an eye on you, man. Yeah. We say this because we see you. We, we, we see the effort. Yeah. We're just trying to push you, but just trying to push you. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, so, so that was a good game. Obviously, nothing to write home about um, from the Durban High bowling lineup. Um, and then we, we can then move through to Pretoria Boys High versus Vato Club. Now, now... This was a very low-scoring game, right? And um, some guys might sort of question and say, why are you guys even talking about this game? It was a low-scoring game. What is there really there to talk about? But I think there's, there's quite a bit that, that we need to discuss. And, and I think the mentality of the school cricketer um, is probably a big one. Um, and and I'll, I'll tell you why. The, so Pretoria Boys High came in and got skittled out for, 70, for 89 right? Oof. Bowled out for 89. That's, yeah, that's, you Oof. know, fine. It happened, right? It happened. We've seen international teams get bowled out for less recently. Yeah. Um, shout out New Zealand. Um, and then, <laughs> and then we, Watercliffe came in. Obviously, they're coming off like a big uh, 390 plus score the last week, you know? Batsmen are in form. Um, yeah. they are really, they got their tails up. So Pretoria boys had their backs to the wall in reality to, to start off with, considering this is the first game uh, coming back, right? Yeah. Um, Pretoria boys high come, come in, they get bowled out for 89. Uh, Waterkloof comes in, wins it uh, with one wicket down, right? Two of the top water guys are the ones that do fantastic. Um, from Vatuklov, uh, Hannes Marais comes in, takes a fiver and six overs, 
going for um, going for 21 runs. Right? Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm. Honus, Murray, fantastic. But you're on the you're on the, the bowler's board for the groundsman for sure. Um we and, see you, and, buddy. Yeah, no, we see you, boy. You see you. You're doing a fantastic job there for Vata Club. Now, 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 here's my problem. I came, I, I started watching that game. Uh, maybe Vartoklov needed, they were on 70, 74, 73, 74. Um, and I looked at the fielding, uh, the fielding setup for, for Pretoria boys. Mate, these these Vartokliff boys were hitting the sweepers, right? Yeah. You're defending 89. The, the opposition team is on 74, 73. They're just about to close it up. Uh, they got over, just over 10 runs um, uh, to, to get uh, just under 20. You, you've got sweepers out, mate. Bring your man in. I mean, it, they're going to take you away. Dude, Bring your they, man in. they hardly had to the do top. anything. They hard, I mean, Waterkloof hardly had to do anything. They literally, honestly, I, I just saw them playing normal shots. Back for drive, take one, sweeper. You know, flick to the leg side, through mid-wicket, take two. Hit it straight, there's a man, there's a man at long on, take one. Right through to the and end, I, see- I think they hit a boundary for the last ball. For the, for the when, winning, you, right? when you see a field like that, you already know. It tells me one in two things. Either one, the captain has given up. Or two, or well, the captain and the team have given up. Yeah. Or two, they don't, the captain doesn't know strat- field strategy. Yeah. Captain doesn't know field placements. Captain doesn't know the significance of bringing players in and um, strategy and tactics and understanding that, listen, we've got, you know, they need 10 more runs. We need to bring them in. If they want, if they want any runs, they got to go over the top. They got to risk going yeah. over the top, but what they're not going to do is get easy singles. Yeah. They're not just going to work it away, work it away. Let's bring the field in. I, those are the two things that I think about. Yeah. Yeah. And you're absolutely right, man. I think there's a, there's a hunger that was lacking from Pretoria boys. And that's why I was, I was, I made the joke earlier that I think they were eating nachos and, and weren't really doing much when they were home. But it's, it's one of those things where you, you just don't understand where was the fight. You know, you, yes, you're defending 89, but you're defending 89 for the badge. You know, that you're defending, yeah. you're defending Pretoria boys high um, as, as the institution on that field. And you've got your neighbor in Vartokloff coming over and essentially telling you that you, 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 you're not going to do anything here. Because I think they were playing, uh, they were playing at Vartoklov. So you went over to Vartoklov. You woke up early in the morning. You told your parents, I need to go. You, you, you left some of your mates at the hostel and you said, I'm going to go and play cricket today. And you just didn't fight. Yeah, so you like you have to fight. You have to show some kind of um, some kind of grit, man. Some kind of that scrappy um, uh, attitude where you're like, you know what? We scored eighty nine, but hell, we're gonna take a couple of them down with us, you know? Um, and and it it almost begs that question of. Um, and we've seen it with the Proteas, right? Every time we get to like a semi-final or, or that, the final we got to, like we, we, we lack that, 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 that grit, that, that dog with a bone. You're not, you know how the West Indies won the, the T20 World Cup where it looked like they were down and out. It was, mm. it, was it looked near impossible for them to, to get anywhere. Um, and let alone win win that World Cup. They had everything against them. They had their their selection committee against them. They had the the uh, cricket association against them. They had to hustle to get uniform for that tournament, mm-hmm. man. Um, and they went and and galvanized and got and and got all these mercenaries 
that play T20 tournaments around the, <laughs> around the world. Um, and they came together with one belief. And that is... Rally. The hey. Rally in the West Indies. Indies. Anyway, guys, don't mind Now me. and forever. Right? Ish. Like, it's, it's, it's that grit that guys like those can come out and win a World Cup. And South yep. Africa sits with all the support in the world, with all the privileges in the world, with all the facilities in the world, all the technology and the analysis and the team doctors and the fitness coach and a batting coach and a spinning coach and a continental coach and all of those things and just cannot seem to get over the line. And the only thing I can think of, well, there are a few things, but one of the things I can think of is just that from a, it just seems like we don't have the grit to grind out a win, to, to swing um, and take a couple of these guys down with us. You know, you know what it is, man? Let me break it down. I personally, from my perspective, I see it as a lack of scrutiny. Mm. If you look at guys that become complacent, it's because there's nobody scrutinizing them. I bet you... The boys on a rugby team don't sleep yeah, because they scrutinize. It's the same reason why India can't lose a couple of series in a row and, uh, without people getting dropped. It's the same yeah. reason. If you look at all these countries that win World Cups, they win them because it's, it means like they heavily scrutinize when they get back home. Our guys are... Ah. Ah, <laughs> uh, good try, gents. Next time. Uh, next time. Uh, who, 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 how many uh, color players did we, did we play did there? Field. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay, no. Did we stick to the, okay, no, no, no. No, but you guys tried, <laughs> ne? I, I, semi-final. I, you guys, Matt, but you yeah, tried, no, you did it, eh? Yeah, no, Ish, I, Again, semi-final, again. I, but you tried, you tried. And, yeah. you know, that's not what happens when David Warner and them get back. Yeah. Oh, no. You, f- you failed. Yeah. You didn't come back with the cup? What the hell did you guys go out there for? Oh, you better win the rest of the year. Yeah. Oh, you better be the number one team. You better do something to make it up to us. Oh, guys. Yeah. Fine. AP, you won score 100 back in the day. Yeah, you're going to have a 10-year career with us. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Never win a World Cup. You know, have a couple good series here and there. Earn yeah. taxpayers' money. That's but anyway, we're going deep. But that's the truth. There's no scrutiny. There's no serious consequence. Yeah. Guys, no, yeah. When, in South Africa, we've got this thing to say, ah, no, he, he's set. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, he's he, not going he's anyway. Set. No, he's good. Yeah. And basically what we're saying is that, you know what? He's got about three years of bad performances before he's considered to be dropped. Yeah. We'll go three years with him playing shitty before we start to go, ah. Yeah. In three years, mate, you're definitely going to get some runs if you're a decent player. Yeah. 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 You're going to pick but up You're never going to win us anything great, Brad, because you're not that guy. Yeah. yeah. And nobody's putting that pressure. And South Africans, we don't put that pressure on guys. And I think that's when you see it. Arthur Cliff, they do well because they probably put pressure on their cricket. Yeah. Cricket is a big thing at Arthur Cliff. There's a reason why they were the champions since 2015. Yeah. They've been champions of the Gun and Moor. They're under 15 team. There's yeah. a reason for that. Yeah. They scrutinize. They criticize. They got to step up. You see the St. Stidians, when they step out, do what they gotta do because there's scrutiny on that. They didn't spend all that money on those pitches and those those mats <laughs> and all the equipment they got and all the funding they get to travel and all that. They don't spend all of that not to put pressure. Yeah, it's pressure on the boys to perform. Yeah, yeah, and and pressure builds character, man. Let's let's just be honest about it, right? We're in a world now where um, people talk a lot about you gotta let kids be kids and. Um, you have to allow them to, to 
to fully express themselves and really if something's just too much you have to let the boy child just really sit back and and process his feelings and and we get all of that but without pressure there's no character mate without pressure there's no there's no grit without pressure there's no there's no there's, you don't you never get the opportunity to develop the voice that can only speak to you when when you're alone when when the chips are down and you've got no one to lift you up and um and 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 that's what cricket does right cricket says uh last over they need seven runs you've got six balls everybody's looking to you step up mate we need six yorkers from you we need you to hit the block hole six out of six and the only person that can get you to 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 that eventuality is you it's you the ball and the batsman that's it and if you can't yeah. withstand that kind of pressure and build that kind of character honestly what use do we have for you you know what 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 use do we have for you in a team because we're going to we're always going to we're always going to be we're almost going to get close you know we 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 always going to just fall short um, and and if 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 we're just out here to entertain, right? If we're just out here to entertain, have a good time, um, let guys come out with their bry stands, have a couple of beers in, in Castle Corner, um, you know, get a little get a little kiddie pool, and everybody can sit in the water, and we can have nice visuals for Super Sport. I mean, hey, then then that's what we are to do. But if these kids are going to dedicate their lives, their time, their um, their mental capacity, and sometimes even sacrifice um, sleep to be good at this game. You have to give them an opportunity or put them in an environment where they can build character. And that is with pressure. So you're right, mate. You're absolutely right. My whole right. thing is, based on what you're saying right now, my whole thing is, I think that is most parents see things from their kid's perspective, but nobody ever looks at the bigger picture of sport, the entire body of sport, right? You got 11 guys that are called the first team. Why are they called the first team? Because there is a second team and a third team and a fourth team. And there are grades underneath that. And guess what? Everybody wants to be part of the first team. So for you to be part of that first team and to feel like you can just slack off and that's fine, that is selfish yeah. because there, there are so many boys that would kill to have your spot on that team. And if they had that opportunity, they would have fought harder than you. Yeah. But you're there and you get to hide and go, oh, no, nah, man, it's, you know, it's, it's cool. You know, it's just sport. No, it's not sport. Maybe yeah. sport to you, but that kid in the second team, to him, it's his dream, man. And you just yeah. get to take that spot and not even... Like, you know how it feels for somebody to watch somebody take a spot that they would give their life for mm. and not even care about that. This is why guys are so attached to sportsmen and why when a sportsman fails, it hurts us in terms of when a sportsman does badly because you achieve something that I would have given my left leg to do. You became an international player and then you went and cheated yeah you went and yeah. took a bribe bro come on and that's why we feel so emotionally attached because it's like bro you had my dream and you pissed on my dream bro yeah <laughs> that's yeah that's how sports guys feel yeah so even in the team even at school you need to understand what it means to be part of the first team because there's a second team and as long as there's a second team, it means there's a group of boys that wish they could make it to the first. Nobody sets out for second place, guys. Yeah. So appreciate the guys at second place because they make where you are actually mean something. Yeah. Couldn't have said a bit of myself, man. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's how we end up with an Andy Lepezogwa. Okay? Like, I've been looking at like 
the 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 journey of some of these guys in the system right now and and where they are and how they got there um and i'm doing a bit of work on that we're gonna have a, a great conversation in the next few weeks about it and i was looking at and, and and i hate i hate to say it really i do guys please hear me out here i hate to say it but he has been given one of the longest runs that any player i think has ever gotten in south african cricket without any meaningful performance okay like and and I really hate to say this guy averages nine in T20s, and he he's he's a traveling reserve in our T20 World Cup squad. Okay, meaning, and he's an all rounder. He's an all rounder that's supposed to come in and finish off a game. Essentially, if it, if if uh, I know David Miller is not an is is not a um, uh, an all rounder, but essentially he should be able to replace a David Miller. In the batting lineup, he's our Glenn Maxwell. He's like, yeah, exactly. He's our Glenn Maxwell. He's supposed to, he's supposed the to be an, an X factor player, and he averages nine. That guy's played thirty five. In, in how many games? games? Thirty five. Wow, thirty five T twenty games, and just think of it in the context of how many international games these guys get a year. Right, they don't get a lot, right? Because they're mixing up ODIs with test matches and T20, so they'll maybe have a few series in the year, and in that series, they'll maybe play. Now they used to play five match test games, but now they play about three. Um, they'll fit in it like they'll fit in maybe three T20s in there, or five T20s, and then fit in two ODIs or maybe three, right? In in and they'll and they'll have about three series, three four series a year. And that's a jam-packed mm. um, year for them, right? This guy's played 35 games, T20s. He's played, 67, he's played 67 ODIs and four test matches. He averages nine in T20s. He's in our World Cup squad as a traveling reserve. That means if someone gets hurt as a batsman or a bowler, Andy Liz first in line, okay? He averages 25 in ODIs as coming in as like a number six. Okay. He's played a fair He must be the game. lowest average all rounder in international. I'll have to look that up. On the big eight. I, I will have to look that up, dude, because I would not be surprised. In T20, how do you average averaging nine? How do you average nine after thirty after thirty five games? Thirty five games, nine. Ah, I'm pretty sure I could take some of these high school boys at Vatu Club, <laughs> and they could do the job, bro. I'm pretty sure that I could take some of these high school boys at Vatu Club, and they could do the job. But to come out and average nine. And you get included in a World Cup squad. Are we trying to win? Is there no one else? Is there no one else? <laughs> nah, Is there dude. no one else? Nah, mate. Nah, mate. Listen, I, I think the kid is cool and everything. You know, he's a brother, which is cool. Uh, but, I mean, the average nine and get into a World Cup squad, man, there's, a, there's another kind of ancestor. Your ancestors are looking out for you, bro. Like this, 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 they have serious presence. They have serious presence to get out with that average and get into a T20 World Cup squad, even as if you're just a traveling reserve. Does he play IPL? Uh, no, I haven't seen him at the IPL. I don't think so. Because IPL will show, will show you who's who. IPL, <laughs> IPL will humble you, Chief. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. IPL puts a price. See, it's it's, yeah. it's all nice because when the taxpayers are paying, the se- the selectors aren't thinking about the money. But you see it reflecting at IPL when the, when when there's a when there's a dollar amount attached to a player. Yeah. Now we start to see who's who, who's still yeah. playing, who's still yeah. getting picked, who's still worth the money. Absolutely. And that's how you can see guys that don't play for their national sides from other countries coming over to the IPL. 
because they're churning out numbers in their first class cricket games. So there's like the, the real players get pulled out when when winning is everything because there's money on the line. And that's what you're seeing with the IPL and a lot of these T20 tournaments around the world. And look, some may argue that I'll play devil's advocate and say, some may argue that Pats has had some good game-winning performances or gotten the team close to the line. And that's probably <laughs> why he's still on the team, that he has that potential to... to help or win a game even though he's not consistent and i'm I, i'm playing devil's advocate right advocate right now yeah listen listen uh, if 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 you play and and i and i understand what you're saying and that is that is a fair comment to make but if you play 35 games and you're scoring nine you've lost us more games than you've won us Let's be honest. There have been times where we've watched the Proteas and we thought, okay, it's not that bad. We've got Miller and Andile coming in. Like an over or two down the line, he's out. Here comes Maharaj. Now we're probably in the tail. Now we sit in there. I mean, there are games where we cross fingers and we're like, yeah, Maharaj, come on. Do, pull, pull, pull a rabbit out of a hat. We know you can bat, man. He plays a straight drive, one straight <laughs> drive. We're like, Maharaj is here today. Why? Because we, because Andy let us down. He let Do us down. Do you think Maharaj is where he is because of Andy Le's piss poor performances? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he's all the, he, I, I saw him captaining the T20 the squad. I think that's all yeah. Andy. He's got to go find <laughs> Andy Le's answers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, listen, I think, I, I personally, I think Maharaj has put in, he's put in the work. I think in the test side, he's, he's definitely put in the hours. And... Because? Let's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, listen, we can, yeah, this yeah, conversation, yeah, this, this conversation <laughs> can, we, we can take it there. Um, but again, I think we're running out of time. Um, but I, you, you are right. It is part contributed to the fact that Andile has been so poor. Um, but I think it also contributes to the fact that our middle order has been so poor, right? If you think about it, when, when Quinny is not mm -hmm. playing, right? If he's not around, um, essentially, oh, sort of over the last few days, you, we hang all our hopes on 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 Rassi, right and every every yeah. every now and again Markram will will produce a gem of an innings i just think i think we all love aiden right <laughs> i think we, it's it's a consensus where you're like you know what aiden is class um he'll perform more often uh, than he doesn't there's something there yeah, yeah there's something there definitely right so we we all love him we think he's fantastic um Ru Rassi has pulled a rabbit out of a hat for us more often than I can count. And obviously, there's all David Miller, all Mr. Reliable in that middle order. Um, and then without that, we're, we're dead in the water, mate. If we play, um, and I'm, I'm even concerned that if we play a Bangladesh today, we're in trouble. <laughs> we're in trouble. You saw what they did to, to New Zealand and Australia. Shamble. Listen. <laughs> Bangladesh punish anyone who sleeps on them. You sleep yeah. on them for a second, it will punish you. If you're yeah. if you're on your ball, you'll beat them. But the yeah. minute you sleep on a Bangladesh, just for a second, yeah. it'll beat you any given day. On any, any given day. day, they're just under par. So if you're not at your best, <laughs> they consistently under par. So if you're just a little bit out of your game as a top class team, you'll yeah. lose. Okay, so. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that some people may not agree with, but I feel like in South Africa, in the Proteus, from the Proteus side, and maybe even in sports, that we need to stop keeping the popular color players because of that one performance where 
everybody knew learned their name. <laughs> <I> Hello. Think, <laughs> I think over time we've had this thing of we don't like to introduce new color players because you know everybody knows who this one is. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows who that guy is. And yeah. it may even be, you know, they get additional support because you know now we have a guy and he yeah. won a game for us. And regardless of whether or not the next 20 games he doesn't pull through. He's still known. So that one where he does pull through gets so much admiration that it makes up for the 15 or the 20 that he failed before us. And there's quite a few guys, man. Yeah. There's quite a few guys. Last time I remember Temba Bavuma scoring 100 was back in <laughs> Cape Town. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> that's listen that's fair okay that, i think that's that's a fair comment to make um and i and i do think uh selectors almost get backed up in a corner where they think to themselves i can't i i, I can't sub this guy right i can't drop this guy yeah it's like um, we don't want them to fail yeah it's like they're allowed to fail sometimes he's not the guy yeah. Sometimes he has a couple of good performances and then he's out of there. We do it with the white guys all the time. Yeah. That's my problem is that the it's not the quota system. It's our inability to see that, okay, cool. Yes, there is a certain number of players that need to, that need to be a certain race. Okay, great. There's a certain amount of players that are a certain race. Okay, great. But in between that, how do we treat that system? Do we keep the ones in color? Because there's enough to replace them as well. Yeah. It's not like it's just them. There's a whole, there's a whole host of color players that can yeah. take those guys' spots. So yeah. it's not like, oh no, for every um, one color player, that's a white um, player's spot. It's like, no, yeah, that's another color player's spot. Yeah, that's what it is. So we need to. Like, we can't just say, okay, cool, this one's doing well. And we, we do that all the time, even in the provincial setup at schools. Once we find the, the crop of black guys that, you know, they do well, they're pretty good, you know, we kind of just stick with them and we don't actually go look for the real guys, the real guys, the guys that are going to be there long term. And every yeah. now and again, we get a KG Rabada that comes in and it's like, oh, thank goodness. Yes. Oh, oh, we've got a good one. We've got a good one. Yeah, yeah, but there's a lot of guys and it's fine if we keep rotating color players. It's fine. If he doesn't play well, get rid of him. Let's get another color player. It's get cool. another one in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same, yeah. same with the, on the other side with white guys. Like it doesn't have to be that way. Yes, we know there's a certain number of guys, but it can still be fair in the sense that if you're not good enough, for your slot, then you got to go out. Yeah. Because there is enough guys. This yeah. whole thing of us pretending as if there's not enough color players that, oh no, you know, we just got to stick, who else are we going to choose? Yeah, what do you mean who else? That's nonsense. That's nonsense. 80% of us are black. Yeah. What do you yeah. mean who else? Yeah. <laughs> there's a whole lot of them. But because we're so fixated, and we let the, the whole media play that, oh, this is the guy now. No, that's not the guy. Switch him out. Get another one. Yeah. Get another player that can play. Let's see how hungry he is. If he performs consistently, he stays. If he doesn't, he, he goes. goes. Anybody. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. The only thing we measure is consistency. India is so good because they don't play that stuff. Yeah. Who's good? Oh, this guy. He's been undeniable. What's his name? Dhoni. Oh, Okay. How long has he been playing? Been playing forever. How many hundreds? He got we 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 like we lost count. How many hundreds? Oh, okay. I think yeah. he might be able to make it into the Indian side. Yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah. do we do? Oh, oh, snap. Is that did that kid just score a hundred? Oh, how many hundreds does he have? Oh, okay, two. Oh, that's great. Let's let's get him in. Let's get him a look. Let's oh. give him a look. Yeah. Oh, yes, he has a good game. The whole country saw him. He has the support. Oh, great. Yes, we've got that checked out for the next 10 years. Yeah. What? We don't have to, we don't have to go and find any other players. That's how that is exactly how you get Andy Lip playing 35 games without like 
with without a second look, mate. Like I don't. It's it's ex, you exactly right. Is that why do we pretend like there's no talent pool? I mean, we've 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 looked. We've been looking at the school cricket thing now for for a, for a minute, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the talent pool. And I won't lie to you. I haven't been in like too deep with it. Um, maybe circuit, let's say four years back. Um, then I only started looking into it sort of over the last three, four years. And to be honest with you, I came into this thinking, um, we're not getting enough development opportunities. I, I came into this thinking, color players are not getting enough development opportunities. The, 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 the pool is too small. There is not enough going on to, to, to unearth talent. And do you know what I've discovered, mate? Do you know what I've discovered? No. It's the syndrome Preach. that you're talking about right now is that we pick one and we say, that's the one we're going to go with. And then the other 55 that have been sitting, working their, their, their socks off to try and make the side get discouraged and think, I don't understand. Why am I not getting a shot? This guy averages nine in T20s. I'm, I'm, I am, I am, I am absolutely demolishing here at the academy system. Why am I not getting a shot at franchise? Why am I yeah. not getting a shot um, at, at uh, uh, SAA? Why am I not getting a call up? I'm, I've been playing this thing now. I'm 26 years old. Uh, I can't play academy forever, mate. I also want a family and kids and, and, and a life outside, yeah. you know, outside of just playing the game. Right, and and then those players go. You know what? Ah, I think I'll be a sports nutritionist, or maybe I'll go coach somewhere, or these these um, uh, these these independent schools pay really well. I'll maybe go coach at Grey High, or go to St. John's, or or go somewhere else, and and just let this thing go. I've got some pedigree, and I've played at a decent level. That that yeah. is what's happening to the talent pool. Yeah, the best guys are becoming coaches. Yeah. The best guys that could have played for South Africa are arguably the coaches that are coaching the schools. And that's why you see a St. Stithians is able to take a, um, a Gwen yeah. and bring him up to first team. Yeah. But South Africa can't do that. Our systems can't do that. So I don't, I think you're right. We may have come into this thinking, let's uncover the, the junior system, but the junior system is actually what's holding up the entire um, cricket infrastructure at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a funnel, mate. There's, there's a pipeline of players who are passionate, who are, and, and so like I've changed my, my, the, our groundsman Instagram. Hey, go check us out. The groundsman cricket on Instagram. Um, our Facebook is there. The, and I, I follow all of these guys, right? Um, private academies as yeah. well. You see all kinds of players, mate. White, black, Indian, colored. All, you see all they, kinds of players putting in the work, getting in with yeah. private coaches, getting in with, 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 with clubs, playing at the high level in their schools. The pipeline is there. The pipeline is available. It's just, mm. the, it, it's as if there's, they, it's as if there are gatekeepers who say, mm, no, I didn't pick you from the start. Or, mm, yeah, no, I don't, you haven't, you. You haven't, I don't know you. I don't know. You haven't been in my academy long enough, right? Like there's a, there's a select group of gatekeepers um, at, at, at sort of a, at a, at a national level and at a provincial level that go, no, I, I, haven't, I haven't been with you since you were 13 years old. So I don't know you. This kid, this this kid's parents. Remember, there's also a return on investment for some of these guys. This kid's parents has been paying me um, uh, 650 rand a month since he was 13 years old. He has to get into SA schools. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He doesn't get into that northern side. What? It, <laughs> it does makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. It's almost as if, like. The system is built for people to take you to the, like someone has to decide, I'm going to take you to the top. And it's not built 
to naturally make it to the top through your performance. It's, it, it's designed for somebody to take you to the top. Somebody has to choose you and go, okay, this is my one. And I'm going to take this guy all the way up to national. And I'm going to take him through the systems. And why should it be like that? Why can't I just consistently score hundreds and make every single team I, I want? Yeah. Yeah. Because also... I, we, one we of the criteria that... is there's a batsman. Yeah. I score hundreds. I score them consistently. I mean... What team won't want me? And that's what the international guys are showing us. We want you. Yeah, you score 100? Okay. Come over here, buddy. We'll take you. Yeah. Why are yeah. we not like that? Why do we have a whole bunch of other stuff? How does an Andrea Gathagolo go look him up on the Coke Book Week? On the, um, that little booklet that you get at Coke Week? Yeah. Go look up on the Northwest, Andrea Gathagolo. Look how, look how that boy dominated Coke Week. Yeah. But you don't know him as a national player because somebody didn't decide to say, hey, I'm going to take you all the way. He couldn't yeah. find that guy. He made his yeah. own path. We'll talk about it one day. Yeah. But for now, it's, it's, it's the fact that he couldn't find that guy that was like, okay, and why should they be that guy? Why wasn't his performances good enough? Yeah. How do you dominate Coke Week and become arguably the highest run scorer at Coke Week in SA history? Yeah. Look that up. Yeah. Arguably, he's arguably the in the he's definitely in the top five scoring batsman in yeah. Coke Week history and doesn't make the S under 19 side. Doesn't make the S under 19 and gets picked for Colts, mate. For Colts. And then they say, oh, oh, we'll give you captaincy. Come on, man. Come on. Put a little sugar on top. That's definitely yeah. somebody working. That's not us looking at stats. We're looking yeah. at stats. He's the best batsman in the country. Yeah. If we were looking at stats, choosing the under-19 World Cup side, he would have been there. Yeah. Based on stats, because there was no other batsman. And I don't care who you are. Tell me you had better stats than Andrea Gathagolo the year of when they selected the under-19 World Cup. Or if he had better stats in his entire high school career. Yeah. I don't know anybody who scored more hundreds, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And we've looked at the numbers. <laughs> we've looked at the numbers. And you numbers. know who I'm talking about. If you've played back in the old... Oh, oh, what year were we playing back? I think it's prior probably to 2011. Yeah, prior to 2010. Yeah, uh, yeah even prior to 2009. Yeah. Around there. If you played around that time, any provincial level, yeah. you know who Andrea Gathagolo is. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, the guys, the guys in the county system know who Andrea Gathagolo is. He's, he's notched up a couple of hundreds against them, mate. Um, Google and- him. You know what? Why are, we, why are we even playing? Just Google him. Google <laughs> him and you'll know what we're talking about. And you'll yeah. realize that we could have had that guy playing for SA and yeah. caning guys. Yeah. Yeah. He's a natural. He was... He, I don't even, even want to say he was a natural run scorer. I'm pretty sure if he decided to come back now, he'd still continue and keep going. Um, it's, and, and he's a perfect example of how the system fails a player. Um, yeah. yeah, anyway, we'll talk more, we'll talk more about him. We, we got some cooking um, coming up. Um, and, and that's something I think you guys will enjoy, for sure. Uh, definitely. I think that uh, it's interesting, man. Once you get into this landscape, you, you almost start to realize, wait a minute. I think on the ground, cricket is actually doing great. Yeah. It's not, it's not represented on TV. But when you get onto the ground and you look at these high school games and you look at like how these club game, how these clubs are incorporating township players and stuff. I mean, yeah. there's so much that's happening on the ground. And I think that that's not being, those guys just, it's almost like a, it almost feels like cricket is dying because n- nothing ever happens for those guys. Yeah. Because what, what are you going to do? You're going to choose six guys and those are going to be your guys for the next 10 years. That means there's hundreds of guys that will never get an opportunity. Yeah. And yeah. we do that all the way down, right? So we do that at 
um, franchise level. We're not even talking about national level. Yeah. There's already a finite amount of spots at franchise alone. Junior Dladla has been playing since, I don't know. Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah. How many fast bowlers have, have grown up in the system, dominated, re- play, gone on to play club cricket, dominated, maybe at Impala or whatever, while yeah. Junior was playing franchise? Yeah. Look at a Dieter Klein, right? Look at a Dieter Klein. He's made an entire career for himself out in county. Probably one of the most <sighs> talented left arm quicks I've come across in a very long time. But again, there was no one in the system to grab, to take his hand and say, I'm going to take you to the top. And why does that even exist? Exactly. Why should someone have to take you to the top? Why doesn't your performance, why, why, why should your talent and your drive and your ambition and the fact that you don't give up and you're better than everybody else why is that not good enough? Why do you still need some guy who's got connections to bring you all the way? Yeah. Or else you never make it. That's not how cricket, that's not what we're, that's not the dream we're sold growing up as high school cricketers. We're yeah. told all you got to do is be best, perform, score hundreds. Get fivers. That's all you got to do. You do that consistently, you'll make it to the top. Newsflash, when you get to the, to the part where now it's time for, for the conversation, they say, oh, wait, but who, who did you come with? Yeah. You say, but no, uh, here my stats. I, 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 I've been scoring hundreds, bro. Yeah. I score hundreds against everybody. I've, I've yeah. done it at a tournament. Look at my stats. But yeah, but like, who did you come here with? Yeah. But... but no, they just said, I just got to show up with my stats. I just have to perform. Yeah, but who did you come here with? Yeah, we know you're talented. Who? I mean, you know, we could look at your stats or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we can find something for you at the uh, development side um, uh, or, or at rural cricket. We can maybe take you there, get you something there. Um, but I, I don't know about this line side. You don't, you didn't come here with like with anybody. So, I don't, I don't know what we're going to... And that's how guys are treated. Yeah. You work your whole entire high school career. You do everything. And cricket is a tough game, man. Yeah. Nobody else is in the sun for as long as us. Unless you're playing golf. And even golf, you're in the shade most of the day. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you go out, you play, you, you play your shot, and then you can move out under the, under the tree. Cricket, yeah. you're out there, bro. At least 50 overs, you're out there. At least. And you've been doing that since you were like 10 years old. And you imagine you do this and you dominate. You dominate when you were 10, when you were 11, when you were 13, 12. And all these years, you're just dominating. Everybody in your country, every time you compete with people in the, in the rest of the country, you dominate them. And you do that and they say you're on their way to, to playing for the country, man. You're the best. Yeah. You do that, and you do that, and you do that every year, every year. You get to under 17, 18. You get to the biggest tournament in high school. You become, you have like one of the best tournaments anyone has ever had. And then after that, they say, okay, wait, it's time for the SA World Cup side. And they say, okay, wait, but you know, you didn't, I didn't come here, anybody. So, yeah, there's a B team. You know, you can captain the B team. You can, you can do that. You, I mean, you could do that, but you didn't come. Here with anybody. Yeah, I see the guy you came with, but ah, that guy's not a, he's not one of us. So, uh, B team's good. B team's good. You can do that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and how many guys go through that? How many guys experience that where you, you live your life for cricket? Cricket is a tough game. You live your whole life playing it Saturdays, Sundays, weekdays, you're practicing all day, yeah. only to realize that the one thing you should have been focused on is finding the guy. You didn't have to be that good. Yeah. You could have just found a guy. Yeah. Maybe if you just found a guy, you could have made your way a lot quicker. You didn't even have to prove yourself anywhere else. Just pop up out of nowhere. Great. Pop on. Because you have a guy. Yeah. And you know how, 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 how good you have to be for another country to go through the effort of 
figuring out your visa and paying you and doing all of that just to fly you over to their country for you to play for them. An yeah. entire county for an entire country to figure out how to make you a citizen just so you can play for them when your own country doesn't even wouldn't take you in because you didn't bring a guy. Yeah, man. I couldn't have said it better myself. And I think this is why the groundsmen are here, right? This all happens in the shadows. This all happens when the parents are not around. It happens when your mom, your dad, your, your coach that you left back at school is not around because now you're on the big stage. And on the big stage, there are certain players, there are certain guys that have keys to the kingdom. Um, and that's yep. why we're here. We're here to, to look out for you as a player. We're here to put your stats up where everyone can see them. Um, we're here to put your numbers up where the, the, the cricketing family can see them and say, we know that boy. We saw him when he was 15 years old. Come on over. He needs to get a shot. Um, we, we hope we get to a place where we don't need a guy. Um, but until then, you've got the groundsman. T, any last words? We are your guy, man. Somebody has to be everybody's guy. That's the groundsman. That's, he's your guy, even physically on the ground. He's the guy that looks out for you. He's the guy that you ask, hey, man, can you, you know, quickly help me with my spikes here real quick? And he's more than happy to do that. So that's who we are, man. We're going to put your stats forward, and we're going to give you that voice. Because that's really what it is. It's the guys with the loudest voices in the room that get heard. Yeah. So a lot of these guys bring their guy, and their guy's the loudest. He's got the biggest pull and, you know, he gets everybody riled up and, you know, this is the guy. But, you know, in all honesty, that's just not fair. So it's been a good co- podcast. Um, I'm interested to hear more about what the top 20 guys are, are doing. Um, moving into the league, I think it's going to be interesting. And I think as we do this weekly, it's going to be, it's going to get heated. We're going to start finding out exactly where everybody stands with regards to the conversations we're having right now. So, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, man. Um, great show. Uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. we got a fantastic few weeks coming up in the season. We're going to be talking about the cricket structures. We're going to be talking about um, academies. We're going to be talking clubs. We're going to be talking the weeks coming up how the stuff is done. Um, we're going to be debating a lot around how, um, uh, how the selections are made, how some of the stuff gets done and how our boys get treated um, by the game. So join us next week for another show of the podcast, another show of the groundsman. Uh, for this one, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, T, for joining us. We're having um, a constant debate week in, week out. We look at the roundups of the game. Congratulations, Walter Cliff, again for a fantastic weekend. Uh, from us, the Groundsman, see you next week. All right, everybody, welcome to the Groundsman. Today's man, that top order just demolished. <laughs> so, normally, what that structure looks like is that there's and honestly, that's part of why the groundsmen are here as well, so that you don't have to wait for Kobe in order to see who's who and what's what.